You're listening to Cinematic Adventures, proud member of the Misfit Faction Media Network. Good morning, Vietnam! I love the smell of napalm in the morning. You're gonna need a bigger boat. I feel the need for need for speed. Rose, we're going, we don't need roads. Snakes, why did it have to be snakes? Vitus? We don't need no vices. I don't have to show you any stinking vices. You make me want to be a better man. Nobody puts baby in a corner. I wish I knew how to quit you. Love means never having to say you're sorry. He's looking at you, kid. Not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cinematic Adventures. Don't forget, if you guys are taking us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you get your podcast. You can also find more of our content on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you find links to not only this show, but some of our other shows, like MF Uncensored and the Multiverse Fancast. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul. With me in the studio today is Sean. Sean, how are you today? Oh, I am wonderful. You don't seem wonderful, tired. Sean. Tired. I'm just tired. Tired of, of the malarkey. Yeah. Just another week of not being a millionaire lottery oh, winning. Oh, God. Did you, did you play the lottery this week? No, I did not. I did. Uh, just have $700 million? Did you win? No, I did win $4 last oh. week. Almost quit my job. Yeah. I <sighs> started writing out the letter and everything. But anywho, we are back, and after we did Teen Wolf last week, we we really wanted to kind of keep that momentum going, and we mentioned during the episode talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and guess what? It's our show. We're going to talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. What? I said we're talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know. No and then. There you go. I knew I'd get that one. I knew, I knew that one would get you. All right, so we are going to talk about the original film first, much like we did for Teen Wolf, and then we're going to talk about the van- the actual TV show that followed. Now, this one's a little unique in terms of it was both were created by Joss Whedon. Yes, the book, the movie was actually written by Joss Whedon, and then the show was created by Joss Whedon. So it's it's very strange considering they are very different properties. Like some of the main things are still there, but it's but like Buffy. Like like Buffy by name, and uh, yeah, that's that's pr- that's pretty much it. But apparently, they are working on a reboot per Joss Whedon as of July 2018. Oh well, that's not happening. That's not happening because unfortunately, and let's get this out of the way: Joss Whedon got recently canceled. Not recently. It's been uh, a, while. Few, a few years ago, like right after the Snyder Cut, or right after the original Justice League came out. Yeah. For those of you guys who don't know, Josh Whedon was was acclaimed in the nerd community. Like people loved him. He, you know, he was you know Firefly, Buffy, Avengers. You know, all mm. these things. He was like a nerd king. And it's recently come out that he was kind of an asshole behind the scenes. Um, not a whole lot has been released as of le- as of yet. Ray Fisher was a big. Like the really kind of oh, Ray Fisher, but then you, you hear about Charisma uh, Carpenter and yeah. Alice Nanigan and even Sarah Michelle Geller is I mean, she's hasn't said anything against Joss Whedon, but she's obviously gonna stand by her, her castmates. Yeah, so let's start with the Ray Fisher thing. So obviously Joss Whedon took over Justice League yeah. for uh, Zack Snyder due to his tragic loss. And, you know, at the t- at the time we were super excited and then the movie comes out and we were we were very kind to that movie, like in retrospect. I will say this Again, it's not a popular opinion. I can actually watch the Joss Whedon Justice League movie more than I can watch the Zack Snyder. I will League. argue that it's only because of length. Mm, it, it's not so much length, but it, the movie is so <sighs> Batman and Robin-y that it's just... You, you shut your whore you mouth. Wanna you want to hate sh- it, but you want to like to hate it. I don't. I don't want to do anything. There's a, there's a handful of parts of that movie I can watch. Absolutely. Of the Joss Whedon one. Yeah, yeah. A yeah, handful. Yeah. But like I can watch the Zack Snyder cut. The only thing for me is it's really the length. Like, I mean, just Zach, the, the Zack Snyder one, I mean, you know, you got to like... It has God. an intermission. Jeez. It's like 1950s with these movies where, you know, you know... You Let's all go to the movies. concession stand. Yeah. But anywho, so after that came out, Ray Fisher was the one who really kind of... He, he shined a spotlight on Joss Whedon and said behind the scenes he was terrible. Mm. Like he was he was rude. He was angry. He threatened Gal Gadot's career, and we love Gal Gadot. She yeah. she's a treasure. The the one of the Fast and Furious movies, the first one with her was on the other oh, day. And I was yeah. like, oh my god, she's so young. But anyway, that was the third one. Yeah, no, sorry, fourth. The fourth one. Yeah, yeah. But and then you get all these things from behind the scenes of Buffy, mostly not a whole lot from like Firefly or any of those other shows. But apparently, Charisma Carpenter, like, he wrote her out because she got pregnant and was not nice about it mm. and did a whole disservice to her and some of the other actresses and actors. Primarily actresses, but also a couple of things. Not, no, like, Harvey Weinstein-style stuff, but... As far as we know now. As far as we know. I hope not. But anywho, so after that, he he was pretty much 
pushed out of the uh, the spotlight, and we haven't really heard too much about him since. But what what were your thoughts on Joss Whedon to begin with? Well, again, I didn't really grow up with the Joss Whedon, you know, universe. I did not watch Buffy. I did not watch Angel. You know, my first real introduction to Joss Whedon was probably Avengers. Mm -hmm. And I compare the Avengers to Age of Ultron very much similar to Batman to Batman Returns. The first movies are directed by their director in a way that, works with the comic book adaptation, but then the second movie comes along and then they turn it into their their movie. You definitely can tell Age of Ultron is a Josh Whedon oh, movie. Oh, yeah. They gave him free, free reign. reign. With, which is fine. I actually, the more I watch Age of Ultron, the more I actually enjoy the movie. It's actually very, very good. But, you know, and it's very like Batman Returns. It's, it's a Tim Burton movie. Mm. The first Batman, yes, it has some Tim Burton aspects to it, but it doesn't have like that Edward Scissorhands, you know, dark, yeah. German expressionistic feel to it. So I don't really have an opinion on Josh Whedon as much. He hasn't done enough to me, at least that I've seen, to really be like, oh my god, he's amazing. Mm. But he's a like the big thing about him is he doesn't have a lot of credits about it. But he was a big script doctor back yeah. in the day. Oh, so yeah. like you would hear like he did, you know, he would rework scripts for all different types of movies. Mm-hmm. A lot of movies he never got credit for. I mean, like you only see it on the IMDb facts that oh Josh Whedon Josh Whedon did an uncredited rewrite of this script so you know stuff like that right you know but I just I don't have any respect for people who are just assholes yeah I mean and you, you, too many people when when there's too when then there's a good amount of people saying the same thing about you more than likely it's true yeah like Josh Whedon like his defense was that Gal Gadot didn't understand English well enough to understand what yeah, he was saying. That's an asshole response. Yeah, her response was, "I understand English perfectly, yeah. and I'll never work with him again." Yeah. But and then like to about Ray Fisher and all, he said, "I never worked with a ruder group of people on Justice League." I was like, "Henry Cavill's rude. Yeah. He's like adorable. Like he's like the nicest, nerdiest guy." It's just again, the guy is he's conceited. He thinks he's God's gift to filmmaking, probably. And, you know, he finally got called out on it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what happens. You know, a lot of times when you become really big, you're, you're yes, he continued to be an asshole, but the past assholeness comes out to light. Look at a past um, hole, much darker version of Brian Singer. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. Actually, people are coming out to defend him all of a sudden. Lately. It's been, weird how that happens. That. Not defend what happened, but say that he was actually a really good filmmaker which you know fine. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you can, can say, say he's about, a great filmmaker say that about Joss Whedon too or like you can even look at some of like uh, who directed The Shining again off the top of Kubrick show? Kubrick like he was terrible to uh, Shelley Duvall yeah, The Shining like, you hear yeah. horror stories but that's okay yeah. that's fo- totally fine yeah. but like he traumatized that woman yeah oh, like what 142 takes on the baseball bat scene <sighs> like something like that I told the cast not to talk to her or like help her or anything like oh man rough but anyway let's talk about the movie because this movie's just fun oh god yes this is just a fun movie so the show and the movie have the exact same synopsis it's about a varsity valley girl cheerleader who is chosen to save the world from vampires and go Mm. All right, so initial thoughts on the Buffy the Vampire Slayer film. Oh, wow. So, again, I knew the show was much darker, much more serious. This movie is the definition of just fun, jokey, really not much serious you know, m- moments in this movie. There's a couple moments where you're like, oh, okay, that was a little dramatic, but for the most part, very hokey, mm. which is not what Joss Whedon wanted. That not, was not in his original script. They lightened the movie up a lot more to be released. It was It's Valley Girl meets Vampires. Mm. I mean, you know, to the, you know, it's like the clueless. It's, before, it's clueless before clueless. Right, because this was 92. The 92. So this is like, you know, just the movie starts off and the girls, I mean, it's literally, you know, clueless meets, you know, the vampires. I mean, really, that's all I could say about it. It's, but it's it's hokey. It's hokey, but it's got a good spirit to it. It's, it's clueless a good meets. Cast. Oh yeah, we'll talk about the cast in a second. But it's clueless meets the Lost Boys. I think yes. that, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, I could see that because it, it does have some dark moments in it. Yeah. Like people die in this. Well, obviously, like a lot of people die. But uh, yeah, so let's start with the cast. We have Christy Swanson as Buffy Summers. Christy Swanson was such a '90s it girl. She was nine. Yeah, she was like late '80s. 
you know, into the 90s. I mean, she went all the way up to, remember her? And Dude, where's my Dude car? Dude, my car, which was the weirdest. It's Christy Boner. Because she's like probably almost 40 in that movie. And oh my God, is she and still she's gorgeous. She still looked like she was like 25. She looks great. I mean, she goes all the way back to Ferris Bueller. Oh yeah, that's right. She's the girl in the classroom yeah, that yeah. does the whole like you know. I heard it from sick. a si- heard it from my sister's friend's brother's yeah, I, I boyfriend remember. who saw Ferris pass out at Thirty One Flavors last night. I still love it, but she's she's one of those actresses that I don't really think got her due though. Like she's got, she's got a few other things to her, but like in all honesty, she, you know, right now this she, is probably her claim to fame is this movie. She's fifty three. Really? Yeah, she was in Hot Shots. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. I'm just looking at her. Hot uh, shot. She was in the chase. She big was daddy. The big daddy. That's right. She's the girlfriend in the Vanessa. Beginning. Yeah. Vanessa and the big daddy. What happened to Sid's five year plan? <laughs> and then not a whole lot of other stuff. Like nah, she kind of really kind of fell after off. dude. Where's my car? It kind of, and that was yeah. 2000. So yeah, after that, a couple of television things, but really like her big, her big thing was late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. Oh, she was on psych. That's nice. But yeah, otherwise she hasn't been around. But like, I do like her. I think again, she did not get her due. I feel like she's one of those actresses that we everybody remembers and everybody knows, but nobody yeah. like, like oh, I remember. You really just remember her for this. I think this is her biggest role. Mm-hmm. So next going down, we have one of our another big '90s star, mm. Luke Perry's Oliver Pike. First and foremost, rest in peace, Luke Perry. Yes, big I, fan. Yeah. He was one of the best things about Riverdale, even though oh, that show, that show went off the rails. And this is Luke Perry. Season two of Beverly Hills 90210. So, this is Luke Perry at his all time high. At his Perryest. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, 92 is when this movie came out. And then I'm trying to, yeah, Beverly Hills 90210, the first season was 90. So, yeah, probably about, uh, he did almost 200 episodes of that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I liked Luke Perry. I Anytime he was on something, I was always like, oh, it's Luke Perry. You know, he did a great episode of uh, SVU. You remember that one? Where, it's the kid who has like the explosive anger, and he's like driving the truck at the beginning, and yeah, yeah like apparently he's he has a, a weirdly good memory when it comes to SVU episodes. Oh yeah, it's it's TV in general. Like <laughs> small, Smallville, it was the same way. We do, yeah, Smallville. I'm better with movies than I am with TV shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, are. you definitely are, especially if the movie was like made years and years and years ago. But anywho, you're it's we're like a good combo though. Oh yeah, it, yeah. It, it's you know it complements. But I like Luke Perry again, another actor. He's really just known for Beverly Hills 90210. I think Riverdale helped. It was like that. What's the? It's the. It's the word you always use when it comes to uh, old stuff into new stuff. Nostalgic. Nostalgic was having him in that show. Oh, absolutely, and he just brought a lot. Of, he's just a likable guy. Yeah. Uh, did you ever watch Beverly Hills 90210? I don't think I was allowed to. Not when it was on regularly, but like in reruns. Yeah, and then they did like the FX network. Or they did the like uh, the remake with the girl from Fired Up, Panthers Out. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I I I think I watched the first two seasons on uh, like streaming, mm-hmm. and it's it's a much more serious Saved by the Bell. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You know, that's but, what it was. And now going down the list, we got Rutger Hauer as Rutger L- Rutger Hauer as Lothos, the uh, bad guy. Rutger Hauer, rest another one, rest in peace. I know, man. Like he's again, so many of these actors that are like actors you know, yeah. and if you don't know them, you just have to mention something that they were in. You're like, oh my god, it's that guy. And he's another one, very similar to the next actor we'll mention. Um, Rutger Hauer's really not in the movie that much. I mean, no, he really is. I think combined screen time, I'd, uh, screen time, I'd say is maybe like ten minutes. Mm-hmm. He really has like. One scene in the first half, and then like the ending. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really doesn't make much of an appearance. You know, he's kind of like held back to be like the big reveal near the end of the movie. He was in Batman Begins more than he was in this. Probably, yeah, Yeah. that makes sense. But I might have been in Smallville longer than he was in this. Oh my god, who was he in Smallville? Season four and the five. Oh, he's Morgan Edge. That's it. That's right. Wow. Oh, look at that. I like him. Paul, Paul. Again, he's one of those actors that that pop up all sorts of places. Oh yeah, I mean, go back to Blade Runner. And, mm-hmm. You know, he's he's a great actor. You got Donald Sutherland as Merrick Jameson Scythe. Did they ever Smythe. have Merrick in the show? No, they kind of, it kind of warped his character and like so when the show comes out, they take a lot of these character concepts and change them. Oh, okay. Some of them are are very similar, and then others just not so much. Oh. Yeah. Well, Donald so the the character of Merrick, he's basically the the guy who has to train Buffy mm-hmm. to become the Slayer. He has progressed through time 
and he finds every slayer after you know once they you know come of age to become to start training he, you, you you never find out exactly what he is is he like a, he a he's not a cuz he dies yeah the, so he is he, in the show I, I i will say it he's he appears in a flashback very similar to like he he recruits buffy into the whole yeah. war against it but yeah you don't ever see him in too much but he is the father of he like in the comic book that comes after the show they they do a little bit more about him but in all honesty yeah he's uh, he's not really that much around but he's basically he becomes like the Giles of the show where he's okay. like the watcher you know he and I liked him in this he kind of has that he is the he has a good little chemistry with Christy Swanson you're very like just straight laced he doesn't really do anything funny but he's just having to deal with this. Seven, I mean, you would assume she's got to be like 17, 18 year old girl who is just worrying about the dumbest things in the world. And he's just like, I'm trying to train you to save the world here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's, it's weird because like Buffy's only like, I think she's 16 in the show when it yeah. starts. So you get to kind of see her grow because the show only went for seven seasons. If yeah. memory correct. Like it feels like it was on forever, but you got Paul Rubens as Amelin. He this, has probably the funniest bit in the entire this, movie. This, so I actually, I remember the first time I ever saw this movie was on TBS, mm -hmm. and they actually promoted it that Paul Rubens was in the movie, oh, yeah. and he was like the vampire, and I'm like, wait, Pee Wee Herman's playing a vampire? I have to watch this. Yep, yep. And, then, and this is... This I, is before the whole... I, is it before or is it after? I, I don't, think it's, Yeah, I think it was before the whole... Uh, whole movie theater incident. Yeah. No. This was after This it? was after. Really? That was in July of 91. Yeah. Because I th I think I read somewhere that it was a, he the director or the, whoever was really wanted him and the studio didn't want. But to, then uh, he got arrested in two thousand and two for what? for pornography. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my god. But he is hysterical in this movie. Oh, um, he's really funny. He just plays this sidekick vampire who's got a leather jacket. He's got a goatee. I mean, you if you did not know it was Paul Rubens, you wouldn't. You could oh, recognize no. him. Yeah, he, and again, he has the like our favorite bit in the entire movie is when he gets so basically in this in this iteration the vampires they have to be staked you know yeah. wooden stake and they don't disappear they don't turn to dust like in the show they turn to dust because i think one of the commentaries basically said we didn't want them to have to worry about bodies every week like just dead bodies all over the town so in this they get staked and then they they die but paul rubens milks it so far he goes into the post credits <laughs> Ah, uh, it was all right. It's Family Guy before Family so Guy. So who'd win in a fight? Peter Griffin rubbing his knee, Lois Griffin rubbing her boob, or Paul Rubens, Paul Rubens. getting? Okay, so Paul you Rubens. Can't you can't. Know. You didn't even let me finish. No, wow. I didn't because I'm wow. sorry. I love Family Guy. I do, but you didn't. Actually, you didn't let me finish. I was gonna say Paul Rubens rubbing in the movie theater. Stop. Stop. Too much. Too much. Too God. much. 1990 called. Wow. Man, Paul Rubens. You, did you ever watch? Uh -huh. Pee you ever watch Pee Wee and all I that? I do remember it, but I was told I did watch it. I like the movie. Oh, the Pee Wee's Big Adventure is, I used is to, good. See, I I remember I was a big fan of the second Pee Wee movie, the Big yeah, yeah. Top Pee Wee. A lot uh, that's more a good than one. That. It's, it's a little bit more family friendly, I think. Yeah, Pee Wee's Big Adventure is a little, but it's 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 scary. It, it's so good. You got the scene with Large Marge. Oh, it's so. And good. you've got obviously the scene with the clowns ripping apart the bicycle. I yeah. still can't watch that scene. But the show. Show was I have vague memories trip. of that. Yeah, I think show. we watched it. I think we like had probably Lawrence had Lawrence Fishburne as the cowboy. S. Epitha Mer Merkerson was in it. Just seriously, like an acid trip of a show. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't remember the show as much as I do remember the movies. We also had uh, Hilary Swank in this. Weird. Academy Award winning Hilary Swank. Paris Vaughn as Nikki. Well, oh, by the way, Hilary Swank played Kimberly because they all have like, you know, like Valley Girl names. Mm. Michelle Abrams as Jennifer. Randall. Blantikoff as Jer Jeffrey, David Arquette as Benny. I yeah, forget he, you know, and he could fly in this. Oh, let me in. You got a Stephen Root as the principal. I, I like Stephen. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. He's one of those it's other. My Stapler. He's one of those actors that melts away into a role. Like he does, but he also hasn't changed the way he looks in 30 years. Yeah, but you can tell the difference between like you have a what was his name in Milton. Or like the guy in Dodgeball. Yeah. You know. Well, the guy in Milton, they made him up so much. I mean, like he, you could, you might not be able to recognize him much as Milton, but in every other role. Yeah, he looks like But he's another too. one that can play drama. He can play physical comedy. He could play, oh, yeah. you know, like goofy comedy. You know, he, he is so good. You got Natasha Gregson Wagner as Cassandra, Sarah Jensen as Grueler, Tom Jane as Zeph. 
Candy Clark is Buffy's mom. And here's where it gets fun. Ben Affleck, uncredited as basketball player number 10. Yeah. Ricky Lake as Charlotte. These are all uncredited. Seth Green as a vampire who would go on to be on the show. And Alexis Arquette as a vampire DJ. See, I didn't know about Alexis Arquette. Yeah. Now that I recognize the scene with the vampire DJ, I'm like, wow, that is That, that is, is definitely her. her. So Tom that, Jane, though. like, yes. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Who's, who is that character? I don't recognize... Him. I know. We're gonna have to, we're gonna, we might have to rewatch this. Where we might can have I, to rewatch it. I wonder where I can find this. It's probably uh, on somewhere. It's probably on somewhere. It's probably, it's probably streaming somewhere. But so the plot is very simple. HBO Basically, Max. Is it on HBO Max? It's on HBO oh, Max. I know what I'm doing later. But what are you doing later? I'm going back to work. Oh. That's why we're recording now. <laughs> but anyway, so the the premise is very simple. Buffy is just you know this snooty rich cheerleader like you know shopping and boys and this and that and she gets approached by merrick who basically says you're the slayer i chose one and you're gonna kill vampires Mm -hmm. but she's she also has these recurring nightmares about the main vampire and that's what kind of convinces her to do it and you know she's got like superpowers she's super strong she's agile she's got really superpowers she's just got she's just she's got enough punch people really hard punch people but like so the scene where he takes her to the cemetery and he's like, just sit here and wait and the vampires pop up and she actually does a good job defending herself. So she realizes, okay, I have a, you I know, have a, a talent, a talent here. So he's like, she like, so, okay, train me. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a, a superpower though. I, I, I do. De- I declare that she does have some superpowers in this, in the, in the show, they established that Puffy, like slayers are just, they're stronger, they're faster, they heal well, more. Maybe. Yeah. That might be, I'm it. not talking like, you know, shooting fire out of her hands. I'm talking about just a little bit. Imagine that would save a lot of trouble for Buffy. That would, I mean, imagine yeah. that'd be a lot of fun. And basically it's about stopping the bad guy, Merrick. No, Merrick's the good guy. Oh yeah. Lothos. He's a good guy. Lothos. That's such a cool name. Lothos. Mm. But what are your thoughts on this on this film? Like, if I had to ask you, explain to me or tell me about Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. <laughs> tell me about it, Sean. Oh, well, uh, I'd be like, did you did you watch the show? Tell, I, for somebody who didn't watch the show ever, and I would be like, okay, you're gonna have a good time. It's a '90s girl going up against vampires. She's a cheerleader. She's spoiled. She is very annoying, but she knows how to defend herself, and she is trained to, you know kill these vampires in such a way that she saves her town. I mean, and there are so many funny moments. And I mean, the, the prom scene itself with all the vampires, <laughs> where it's like, she's like, guys, they can't come in unless they're invited. And Hillary Strike walks up and she's like, I invited them. And she's like, what are you talking about? They're seniors. It's the senior dance. <laughs> this movie has is, got a lot of cheesy. I love I it. I love the principle where he's like, detention. And he's just, just jo- throw the on. slips on the dead bodies. It's like, that's oh, no, no, there's more over there. Yeah. This is a very Monster Squad type movie. <laughs> yeah. Where, yeah. like, they don't care about, like, secrecy or anything no, like that. No. It's well, Even the funny scene at the end where they're, like, it, during the credits, they have, like, the news report interviews. And, you know, they do the principal and then the, the ex-boyfriend. And he's, oh, yeah, I knew someone was coming and we got out of there. And, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, ah. <laughs> uh. Even the was it, uh, when Paul Rubens first attacks Luke Perry in the van and he chops his arm off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ruined my new jacket. Kill him a lot. Yeah. This this movie is is it's, cheesy. It's, it's fun. It's cheesy. That's the best way to describe it. It's cheesy. And even better, it may it doubled its budget. Uh, on a budget of seven million dollars, made about sixteen point six million. So that's so not bad. It's not it doubled the budget, but it wasn't any blockbuster by any stretch, especially for a summer movie. Yeah, in July. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, again, great cast. I mean, you had some really you know young up and coming actors in it. You had obviously the, the the actors of the time in Luke Perry and Christy Swanson. Donald Sutherland was a big name. Rucker Howard's a big name. Paul Rubens was a big name. For, was different, he allowed, re- for was, different reasons. Was he allowed to go to the movie theater to see this movie? I'm sure he was. Oh, my God. For those of you guys who don't know, for some strange reason, Paul Rubin got arrested for exposing himself in an adult movie theater. An adult remember, movie theater. Yeah. Remember those things? Do they still have those? They probably do, they but in all honesty, like... Why would you? Why do you need them? Yeah. It's silly. But... Uh, find those in Times Square all the time. Yeah, I know. Oh, God. Peep shows and all that. Oh, no thanks. No, thank you. Why does he have a mop? Don't worry about it. Would you... Would you ever grow up in the 80s during, like, 
that time in the city like we're no. like you know just anytime no. you walked on the city it was like every every triple x triple x store bookstores book always think of back to the future with the theater it's like triple x show yeah oh god what? the only triple x movie i've ever seen was uh, the movie triple x with vin diesel and that was not a triple x movie no but it was it was a good time though it was before he was like gra- overly growly over a family. The street always wins. But Star City rating for Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half? I will concur. I yeah. think it's uh, – if you know – if you watch the show first and then try and watch this, you may, you probably aren't going to enjoy it as much. Probably not. If you watch this and then watch the show, you're going to enjoy it, I think, a little bit more. Because I think the show – the show is such a, an icon in its own right. People forget there was a movie. Oh, absolutely. And I think... I mean, it was what? When did the show first start? 96? Something like that. So it was four years. It wasn't like the movie was a big hit that the show was like had to happen right away. Right. It took a while. So, I mean, again, it's it's not... When you say Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, to 100 people, I will guarantee you that more than 75% would automatically think of the show. The yeah. Movie. Again, depending on who you ask. If you ask... People younger than us, they'll say the show. Yeah. If you ask people older than us, maybe they might say, say they might both say the movie. or the movie. But all right. Well, with that, we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are talking Buffy the Vampire Slayer the series. But first, a quick break. Hey guys, it's Paul, and the Misfit Faction is looking for your help. We are trying to grow not only our network, but also grow our brands, and the best way to do that is if you guys are looking to start your very own podcast. Maybe you guys have been listening to us for a while. Maybe it's something you guys have always wanted to do, but you're not sure how to get started. If you go to podbean.com slash Misfit Faction, you guys will get a month of free podcasting on a set as a gift from us. So make sure if you guys are looking to start your own show, you reach out to us and go to podbean.com slash Misfit Faction. Also, maybe you guys have your own online business or service that you're always looking to grow and advertising is a very big part of that if you guys go to sponsorship.podbean.com slash misfit faction you guys can get a hundred dollars worth of free advertising again as a thank you from us to you guys that's sponsorship.podbean.com slash misfit faction all right we are back and we're now we are talking about one of my favorite shows of all time and i'll be honest my childhood crush Still, still a queen in my eyes. And that's obviously David Boreanaz as Angel. No, I'm just kidding. Sarah Michelle Gellar, first childhood crush, like my biggest one. This was a show that I think I started watching in the second season just because my parents thought it was a little too scary for me. And uh, they were not wrong. The first season is a little little dark. It's definitely a little dark. Who would win in a fight, Sean? Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Sam and Dean Winchester? Mm. You know what? I'm going to say Buffy. I'm going to say Sam and Dean, even though I love Buffy, because they use guns. Okay, she could use a gun if she wants. She never uses guns. Okay, but she could use a gun. She probably could, but anywho. So... I'll take Sarah Michelle Gellar. Oh, yeah, all the time. I want to watch her new show on Paramount called The Wolf Pack. It's like Uh, a a very loose spinoff of Teen Wolf, but apparently it's not doing too well in the old ratings. Oh, bummer. Yeah, such a shame. But we have Sarah Michelle Gellar playing Buffy, and obviously Buffy has become... An iconic character. Now, let's let's preface this. This show was created in the early '90s and went to the, or excuse me, created in the late '90s and went to the very early 2000s. I think the last season was around 2004, 2005. This show also survived going from the WB to UPN and then right before the CW merger. This movie or this show is a little dated. If you're going to pick up Buffy and watch it now, just be aware you are going to be dealing with some dated things, some dated concepts, some dated words. Like they, they use a fair amount of slurs, but this show was iconic in a lot of different ways. It taught women empowerment. It Buffy is like a, a icon among women, and also it was one of the best and first depictions of a gay character with Willow Rosenberg. Mm. So, I know Sean, you've never watched. No. Have you seen any episodes? No, never. Just never. Never, never had watched any- it when it was on, and and I, I don't even know if it was ever, was it ever on TNT. No, but if I know you, Angel was. Yeah, yeah, and I and we could talk about Angel a little bit, I but don't uh, remember Buffy ever being on like reruns? No, it's on Fuse right now. That's what yeah. I was telling you before off air. Fuse is some random. It's one on of those Hulu. Random. Yeah, I highly recommend it. The first season is only twelve episodes. It's short. It must have been like a mid-season replacement. Or something Pro- like it aired in June of ninety-seven, so probably. Yeah. But then the following season, season two, came out. Oh no, excuse me, it ended in June. It was March, March to June. A little weird. 
Yeah, because it's probably mid season, and they probably just did twelve straight episodes, no uh, reruns. And then, but I, I think this was also at the the early, if not the maybe first, second, or third season of the WB Network. So yeah. this is like one of its founding shows, right? And this, I mean, ninety seven. So like, yeah, so this is pre Smallville. This is pre, you know, all of the the you know teen dramas yeah. that you know it's been known for. This was pre Dawson's Creek. Yes, I, I think like. Away season or two before Dawson's Creek. I think that was 97, 98. And this show's also unique in that it aired in March. It went from March to June of 97, and then the second season of 22 episodes came out in September of that same year. Yeah. That is a very short turnaround. Yeah. Especially to go from like a spring mid-season replacement to a full-on, you know, like the CW really also pioneered the whole, we started like big shows in September and then little shows like I think Legends started off as a littler show or a couple you know, of Legends started off mid season as I recall. Yeah, a couple of their of their bigger quote unquote shows. But again, it survived. It did five seasons on the WB and then it was supposed to end. Like if you watch the last episode of season five, you could tell that's where it was supposed to end. She no. spoiler alert, she dies. And then UPN ended up picking up the show for two additional seasons, and they have to unwrite the last episode. I remember that. I remember one just one night. All of a sudden, I was like, "Buffy's on UPN." Yeah, it was a big thing. I was like, "Really, really big thing." But it's a show that really took the whole world by storm when it came out. Like it, yeah. it had merchandise, and it you know merchandise. merchandising. There was a video game, really, and it, like you you would change between the characters. What system? And, I want to say I played it for PlayStation 2, but I really, like, I can't remember that well. But you have Sarah Michelle Gellar, and you you learn a lot about the Slayers in this. It's a little bit different than, than the movie. Well, you have a lot more time to work with the character and actually, you know, do a backstory and all that stuff. Yeah. That's the one good thing about a show, man. You just, you have time. Right. You know, to really stretch the characters out, to, you know, come up with new ideas that a movie you don't have much time to really warrant doing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you also now have was a, she a Valley Girl in this? Like in the first season, like do you? Is so it it's, like this shows a little weird. So it starts off the first season starts off with her moving to Sunnydale after okay. leaving her old high school, where there was a where she set fire to the gym. Oh nice. So they kind of allude to like the stuff of the movie, except in this darker tone. And so she basically got kicked out of school for becoming the Slayer and you know fighting vampires and lighting the oh, gym. Oh, so on she's fire. already a Slayer when the show starts. She is already the Slayer when the show starts. Oh, okay, so it kind of insinuates that. This show starts after the movie ends, where she yeah killed all the all the vampires, all the vampires, and, and they're like, "Okay, you're expelled." Yeah, like, so it's, I saved your lives, guys. Thank you. In season two, though, they do a flashback to her when she gets recruited by that version of Merrick, mm-hmm. and she's you know she is the Valley Girl. She's like you know call me hi bye you know all these things you know cheerleader and all that stuff. But you you do get that brief brief flashback. Okay. You also have some of the other more iconic characters. You got Rupert Giles played by Anthony Stewart Head, the the Watcher. So basically, he takes over the role of Merrick, Merrick and like the father figure to Buffy. And you get to kind of see him his ups and downs. He's a very like John Constantine type character. If Constantine ever uh, like got straight laced, like in his youth, he goes by the name Ripper, and he's like part of a coven and stuff like that. It's wild. You got her friends, Willow Rosenberg, played I- iconically by Allison Hannigan. She's another actress who took off after this show. You know, you, between this, American Pie, and How I Met Your Mother, like, she really... She, she's gotten her due, which I like. You have Xander Harris, played by Nicholas Brendan. Now, he's another one who kind of went off the rails after this show. A lot of addiction issues. Mm. You know, he's on Dr. Phil. He walked off Dr. Phil, which apparently is ending now, which is sad. Is it? It's Dr. It's not Phil. Love Dr. Phil. You also have Joyce Summers, played by Christine Sutherland, the mom of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm. I love Christine Sutherland. She's another one. You got uh, Michelle Trachtenberg comes in around season, I want to say it's like season four or five, where she plays the sister. And you remember Michelle Trachtenberg, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eurotrip. Pete and Pete. Harriet the Spy. Who'd win in a fight? Her character from Pete and Pete or Harriet the Spy? I don't really remember the character from Pete and Pete much. Neither did I. That's why I referred to her as the character from Pete and Pete. I don't remember a lot about Pete and Pete. I just remember there were two guys named Pete. And Arnie, the strongest man in the world. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Arnie. And you have Angel, played by David Porianis. Popular character, would eventually go on to get his own show. Now, this is my issue with this show, especially on a rewatch. Now, people give Twilight a, a, a hard time for the fact that Edward Cullen is like so old and Bella's like... 16 yeah Buffy was like 16 or 17 when the show started and Angel was you know over 200 years old 
Yeah, but people people tend to forget about that, and it's super romanticized. But so very similar to like Twilight and all these other. Th- when vampires get turned in this, they they don't age anymore. They're done aging. Like yeah. they stop. But it's it's interesting. You also have Chris McCarpenter as Cordelia, who's another character that really came into her own and then went over to Angel. You got Elijah Dushku's in this. Elijah group. Dushku. This is my first time ever seeing her. Yeah. This is before Bring It On and uh, the new guy and all that stuff. I love Eliza Dushku. She's another actress that just. Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. I'm really glad I'm Italian for that one. She needs some hot fixes. <laughs> but I'm a big fan. Sean's losing it. I, mean, I just got him. Man, sometimes we really should do video. Let's see. Who else? Are big names. We had Seth Green as Daniel Oz Osborne. He was a lot of fun. He was very reserved in this. Mm-hmm. You know, you see Seth Green nowadays and he's like, you know, like more eccentric and all that stuff. But he was like, that's like part of his character that he's just very like reserved and of course one of my other favorite characters is spike played by james marsters yes piccolo from dragon ball evolution yeah we don't need to talk about it but uh, he's another character that took on a whole fan base of, of his own like went from evil to good and then like just badass i love it so it's it's hard for me to ask you anything about this show because you have not watched this show no sadly i'm not have you ever had any desire to watch it? I have, but it just again never got around to it. Never got around. Would, would you ever want to? Like, I, I, I would if I have the time. Mm-hmm. Even problem, just like the first time. Like even just like the first episode. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. That'd be a fun watch episode. Maybe. Maybe not. We got to figure out which one of our shows we're going to start doing commentary on. We can do it on MF Uncensored, featured podcast of the month on Podbean. Oh. Shameless plug, shameless plug. To do that? We could, but that would be a lot of fun. So we won't do too much about the actual show because Sean sucks, and he's one of 17 I told people. You, you could talk about it. I'll just sit here and <laughs> Just you sit know, there and smile not and wait. Try and, not try not to fall asleep. Wow, savage. But anyway. Well, it wasn't a knock on you. I'm just tired. Yeah, I know you're tired. It's been a long day. But I'm a big fan, and if you guys have ever seen Buffy, like, seriously, it's it's well worth the time. Anybody? Could you see them redoing Buffy today? They probably will at some point, and I hate to say it, but they'll probably recast with somebody of color or somebody of a minority just because I think Josh Whedon said that he wanted to. I have no problem with that per se. They've had a lot of, like, they've had other slayers in the show, but in all honesty, find the right actress to play Buffy, and I'm, I'm behind it. Like, if you find oh, the best actress it. possible, yeah. I'm all about it. So I, I wouldn't be surprised, but who. At this point, you know, Joss Whedon's kind of taboo. and well, people, they could do it without Joss Whedon. I know, he's but not, it's, he, the fact that it is Joss Whedon, you know? It's still. It's yeah. Still it's yeah. Not, he's not God's gift to humanity. Yeah, I know, but like, he, <laughs> just because his name is attached to it. So I'm going to give Buffy the Vampire Slayer, though, a four out of five. It is, I think it's lost a little in time. It's not as, because it's, it's not as, sometimes it's, it's hard relevant. to watch it. It's not it's as like, relevant. Why do they have a payphone? What is that? Oh, that uh, yeah, like that's... stuff like that. But uh, some of the some of the phrasing that they used were was very early two thousands. Like the things you were allowed to say on TV. I was right. shocked. But anyway, so uh, it was also WB that could get away with a little more. Yeah, a little bit more. So let's jump into fan feedback Friday this week. Who is the worst TV or movie protagonist? Who's I a forgot t- to post that one? I know. So TV who's protagonist a- would be Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory. Oh, really? I, uh, he is annoying. He annoys you. Yeah. He's a great character, but he's just he's yeah. annoying. Do you have a movie one? A movie protagonist that you love to hate. Mm. That was tough because I was like, "Who is a good guy, but you don't like him?" Let me get, get back. It to isn't me. even. It is even somebody that you love to hate. It's just who's a terrible protagonist that you had to follow. Like you had to like watch this movie, and you're like, "This guy kind of sucks." Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think. We have a uh, Joe Goldberg from You. I don't even know what that is. Oh, producer Melanie and I have been watching You. She's watched the whole show. I'm watching You. Yeah, it's a show. You. Oh. You or me? No, that stop it. Don't don't start with this. Who's on first? I can't. We have the, all the characters from Battlefield Earth. That was a good one. Oh yeah. We have TV Rick Grimes mm. yeah, from movie Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, that's a good one. I would even say uh, Skywalker in the first, in Attack of the Clones. Maybe. Yeah. Anything? You got something? Come oh. on, you can do this. Who's just Kylo a, Ren? Kylo Ren. I I could see that because they do make him a protagonist. But, yeah, that's a fun one. So if you guys are ever looking to do Fan Feedback Friday, it's super easy. All you got to do is go on Facebook and find us, Cinematic Adventures. You can also find more of us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Just type in The Misfit Faction. Odds are you'll find some of our stuff. And, of course, we have our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you'll find links to all of our shows, including MF Uncensored, as I mentioned, Podbean Podcast, 
featured of the month, which was really cool. And we want to thank Podbean for that one and the Multiverse Fancast, the show that started it all. You can also find links to our news, reviews, articles, and of course, the Misfit Faction store. One day, Sean's going to buy something from it. Yeah, maybe. And maybe. But that is going to wrap us up for today. As always, I'm Paul. I'm Sean. And we'll see you guys next time.